Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Only on Local 4, a longtime Metro Detroit doctor busted for allegedly running a massive pill mill. Right now, investigators from multiple agencies are executing search warrants at his home and office, and we're there watching it all unfold. And we begin with that breaking news out of Wayne County. Today's seizures and searches uh, culminates a four-year-long investigation. We want to get out live now to our Sean Lay, who has been with investigators every step of the way today. Sean, what's happening there? We're learning this case is absolutely huge. This is the doctor's office here. This clinic was many the police are alleging it is a pill mill pushing out millions of units of narcotics into the street to thousands of people from here in our area, all of Michigan, people coming up from Ohio flooding this place. They just sort of search warrant after a four year investigation. They just took the doctor up. But real quick here, this is John Blair, the chief of police. The impact of, uh, of arresting this doctor and closing this place pushing out pills. What's the impact on the community? I hope there's a message clearly sent. We've had enough and I hope other communities join in. We, we've had enough. It's not going to happen here in Taylor. But the it's impact of it's all. What's the sign say? Yeah, police order. Do not enter. It's closed. It's closed. But the in impact on people, what has the impact been on people? Yeah, well, what we're hoping is that people follow the rules. They get the treatment they need. Got it. But, it's, but we're talking about overdoses, we're talking about addiction, flooding the streets and making the community sick of, as a matter. Right. Only time will tell exact impact that we have. We're getting rid of a source of a lot of problems. It's going to take some time, but I think, again, messages sent. People are not going to do this. And a doctor's not going to operate in the city. We're, we're not going to allow this to happen. Thank you, Chief. Okay, so, guys, we have some video here. We just took the last couple of minutes. The raid went down. There was patients in a packed waiting room. Employees were trying to get in, and then they brought the doctor out. We're not going to identify him because he still needs to be charged, still needs to go to court for an arraignment. But this guy's been operating here, police say, for years. And we're talking about uh, 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 falsifying records, falsifying prescriptions, allegedly. And then all for money. Uh, this is the allegation that he has a 21 thousand square foot home in West Bloomfield that's being raided right now luxury cars in the driveway so he went without uh, any issues here he did say he was shocked he told me he was shocked about this I asked him about the impact on the community however because the overall picture here guys is that the pills are being pushed out and in some cases being sold so you're talking about crimes on the street being sold people in addiction on those pills and then moving on to other harder drugs as well so keeping kind of a community sick and people flooding this area from Ohio as well. The place is closed. A lot of people shocked here, even the doctor, a lot of the patients as well. But police are pleased it's all went down without a hitch so far. We're with them every step of the way. Much more on Local 4 Plus, Local 4. Click on Detroit.com. Of course, the news this evening, guys. And you know, Sean, a lot of that video was blurred. Can you talk to us a little bit just about what the doctor's demeanor was like? I know you mentioned he was shocked. What was he like kind of walking out? So we have to blur the video, blur his face, and his name is on the sign, and we can't show that either until he is officially charged and goes in front of a judge. That could happen today. That could happen tomorrow. We're not sure when. He looked shocked. He was very quiet, but I said, what's the impact? Hmm. What Did you care about the impact on the community? He said something very softly, but then he said uh, that he was shocked. He said he was shocked by this, uh, but it should, police say it should be no shock whatsoever. Uh, this place has been under investigation. They got everything in line right. went in today, and you can see right there it says this place is closed. People are still coming up trying to get in. They have appointments, and they're surprised right, it's yeah. closed as well. So there's a lot to unwrap here, but uh, the bottom line is it's closed, and police say this is going to have a huge impact on the community on, getting, uh, on limiting these pills from flooding the streets. Yeah, you got to imagine what it was like for some of those people in the waiting room. All right, Sean, we know you'll stay on top of it. Thank you. And Local 4 is teaming up with Oakland University to go beyond the headlines this election and really tackle some big issues. In just about a half hour, streaming live on Local 4 Plus, we are holding our first of three town hall events. Christy McDonald is live at the Oakland Center on OU's campus. So tell us what you're talking about today, Christy. Hey guys, it's great to see you. Yeah, it's just afternoon here on OU's campus. And there's always something, just really cool energy when you get to be on a college campus. And today is the first of our three town halls. We thought we would team up with the Center for Civic Engagement here at Oakland University to talk about some of the major issues surrounding this election. And when I was talking to Dave Dulio, who's the head of their political science department, we really kind of zeroed in on disinformation and all of the things that we're hearing, not only in political ads, but across social media. And then looking at even other countries who are trying to meddle into our 
our elections. And how is it different here in 24 than it was even back in 2022 or even the presidential election in 2020? We're going to talk about all of that today. So we have our seats all set up. The town hall is going to start at about 1230. It's open to the public and we're hoping to get a pretty good crowd here today. Uh, we're going to talk about things for about 20, 25 minutes. The cool part about it is then we're going to open it up to everyone who's here. So we're going to have a dialogue going back and forth, a lot of questions and answers. So uh, really looking forward to that. It's going to be at 1230 streaming live on Local 4 Plus. If you miss it and if you can't join us for that, you can see it tonight streaming live at 8 o'clock. So it's going to be the first of three town halls that we're going to be having here at OU. The second one will be later in October and then we're going to wrap things up after the election and kind of the where do we go from here. But today it is all about disinformation, misinformation, the trust that we have in the political process and even what the role of the media is in all of that. So hope you join me today right here at the Oakland Center, campus of Oakland University, starting at 1230. So that's where things stand right now. We hope to see you then streaming on Local 4 Plus. Back to you. Certainly an important and timely conversation. Christy, can't think of a better moderator. I right? know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christy. We'll see you at 1230. Well, right now, our next event, Go Forward event, it's called Rescue Ready, and we're teaching anyone and everyone how to help someone experiencing an opioid overdose. Yeah, and this is kind of a reality that yeah. we're dealing with right now, not just here in Metro Detroit, but all around the country. We are offering the training until 6 o'clock tonight at Wayne County Community College's Down River Campus in Taylor. And that's where Help Me Hank and Dr. Frank McGeorge are right now. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. In fact, we have a training session taking place right behind us right now. We had a busy one just about an hour ago. If you haven't signed up yet, not a problem. You can make your way down here. We're here till 6 or hop on click on Detroit.com to learn more about it. Dr. McGeorge, a great turnout already today. Absolutely a great turnout. And, you know, the main thing to come, remember is that if you come down, you're also going to get a free Narcan kit and you can also get Deterra medication disposal bags. But, yeah, great turnout. Wonderful people, wonderful education. And we also have our sponsors here from Masco and Mariners Inn. Uh, they've been key in helping us put the, together this day and we want yeah. to take a moment to talk with them also. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're going to start out with Sue Sabo here. She's the Director of Communications and Corporate Giving at Masco. So, Sue, talk about how important these partnerships are. Yeah, Masco Corporation is really proud to be a sponsor with WD on events like this that bring life-saving change to the community. And um, we've done this in many other several events throughout um, the year um, that have really brought to the community some, you know, for forms of education and also act practical use. And I think um, that it's really great for the community and we appreciate the partnership. Well, and that is tremendous. And you've been working with Mariners actually as well, correct? We have been. Through our partnership, we're able to support and also highlight some of our nonprofit partners in the community, including Mariners Inn. And they are also doing great work. And I'm going to just jump over here and talk to David Sampson. He's the CEO at Mariners. So talk about how important the partnerships are and how this helps you with your mission. Well, it's extremely important. And thank you for having me. And thanks, Sue, for allowing us to be recipients of such generous resources. It's because of people like her that we're able to do the work that we do. Mariners Inn is a nonprofit. We're a substance abuse treatment and recovery center located right across the street from Little Caesars Arena. And without the type of support that pe people in places like Masco does for us, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do. And this is such a great opportunity to promote how important it is to have this type of resource in Narcan on hand to deal with the, deal the illness of substance abuse addiction. Yeah, and I know that, you know, working in the emergency department, I see many patients that come through with substance use disorder, and the work that you're doing is truly wonderful, and it's so, it helps the community so much. So, you know, once again, come on out to WCCCD in Taylor anytime on the hour until 5 o'clock. That's our last training, and you'll get a Narcan kit, you'll get training, you'll get a medication disposal bag. It's a wonderful opportunity for everyone. Back to you. Oh, making a huge impact, certainly saving lives. Thank you, Doc. We'll check back in with you in just a bit. And we want to take a look now at Ooh. Comerica Park. You can see the fans getting ready to come in because that game was scheduled to be at 640 this evening. But we had to make a little change of plans because of something coming around called Mother Nature. rain. Ah, OK. <laughs> we do want to. Speaking of rain, just look at the green. <laughs> look at the green. I mean, we need the rain. We, we, it's been a while. We do need the rain. You know, we will take it. But it is impacting things here today. Later on, there could be a few thunderstorms. And so that's why the timeline has been moved up. In the meantime, you've got 
some showers to deal with to at least start the game. Hopefully we'll get this batch out of here uh, by the time the at least the second half of the game gets going. Uh, we've got some showers down near Taylor Southgate over towards Plymouth and Canton Hamtramck in downtown as well. Much of Washtenaw County getting in on the action with a few scattered showers. Really this is just light to moderate rain so not all that impactful but again if you are going to the game grab that rain jacket a few lighter and more spotty showers near Monroe and near maybe with the clouds and the rain around it's staying fairly cool out there. We're in the 60s. We may only climb a couple of degrees above this. That may be about it today. But with this system kind of swirling nearby, you can see the chance for showers and even a few thunderstorms will continue. I think the air mass to our south is a bit more unstable. That's where the better chances for stronger showers and thunderstorms. Uh, but we are not out of the woods by any means. So Tigers game will keep some showers in the forecast with a lot of clouds. Temperatures in the 60s to near 70. Maybe seeing a few rumbles of thunder later as the game is wrapping up. But again, I think the better chance comes this evening. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit.